When I was accepted to optometry school, I was of course delighted, but I also felt afraid and more than a little inadequate. I had this idea in my mind that professional school students were cut from something a different cloth, that they were more empathetic, more intelligent, or better human beings than everybody else. While I counted myself very lucky to be included in that group, I was pretty aware of my own flaws, and I didn't feel that I quite lived up to that archetype. These feelings of inadequacy got worse over the first couple of months of school. My first impressions of most of my classmates was that they were calm, put together, and very, very professional. I'd be sitting in class sometimes, completely lost, unable to follow where the prof was going, while all of my classmates seemed to be sitting there, calm, focused, following along just fine. When the prof asked if anybody had any questions, I didn't want to look stupid, so I kept my mouth shut and pretended that everything was okay. <laughs> Needless to say, it was a pretty lonely couple of weeks. Then we had our first midterm. What happened after though, totally changed my perspective. After the grades were released, a girl in my class messaged her group chat. She said, I wish that the class average was lower, people asked her. Why? She said, so I would be above it. This sign of dissatisfaction was the first crack that I had seen in this aura of perfection that I had crafted around my classmates. And over the next couple of weeks, as I made more friends and developed closer relationships, I realized that they all complained about profs, about homework, about each other. We gossiped and we talked smack. And at first, I was a little bit disappointed that this group of students didn't live up to the lofty expectations that I had placed on them, but I soon realized how deluded and stupid that thinking had been. I was also really glad to be able to stop pretending and to be more like myself. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that most of my classmates are smart, good people. But being a good human being is just that, being human. Now, just as I had thought that people were perfect, I somehow had this notion in my head that the school was a ethically sound academic institution that was wholly dedicated to providing us with the best education possible. Things started innocuously enough. We were asked to buy some equipment. It cost several hundred dollars, but we were assured that it'd be stuff that we would need in lab and equipment that we would use for the rest of our career as optometrists. Then things started to escalate. Representatives started to come in from companies. They bought us food. They gave us talks advertising their products and their different features. It was fun. We were expected to make these big purchasing decisions about equipment that we hadn't learned how to use yet. The asks continued to get bigger and bigger. More and more expensive equipment. More advertising and free food. Sometimes as a part of our lectures or during lunch breaks. All with the school's blessing, but without any formal guidance from the school about how to make these big purchasing decisions. I had started to get a little bit suspicious at this point, but third year was the worst. We started to get lectures from actual optometrists who were sponsored by contact lens companies to promote their products. Often these lectures were mandatory as a part of classes or lab, and the speakers often failed to disclose their financial conflicts of interest. I started to realize that I had been pretty naive. <laughs> Ethical academic institution? No. The school is business. Even so, I don't blame them. I'd probably do the same thing if I was in their shoes. And I suppose even education can't be separated from capitalism. That being said though, it is something that I wish I was aware of earlier. So I could be a little bit more intentional about my purchasing decisions instead of just believing that the school had my best interests at heart. So the summer before my first year, I was actually really, really excited to start optometry school. I was convinced that it would be a fantastic learning experience with super passionate profs and really, really great resources. As I soon came to realize though, there is a lot of information to know to be an optometrist. More information than can be feasibly put into a series of lectures. So instead of being the comprehensive teaching sessions that I had expected, Lectures were instead a bit more than a glorified topic overview. It outlined everything that we had to know and highlighted some of the key clinical features, but that was it. As a result, self-study became really, really important. Ideally, a lecture about Graves' disease would tell us the full story, from pathophysiology to clinical presentation to treatment options. It might go something like this. Graves' disease is caused when the body starts producing autoantibodies to TSHR. These overstimulate the thyroid and also cause inflammation and fibrosis of extraocular muscles. Since the orbital space or your eye sockets are somewhat fixed, having all that extra fluid in there causes the eyeballs to look like they're popping out. That's called proptosis. When we have a patient that shows signs of an overactive thyroid and proptosis, we have to consider Graves' disease. In some cases, the swelling can get so severe that it starts to compress the optic nerve, which can cause blindness. So in these cases, we might need to refer this patient for surgery. Ideally, this lecture would also cover some other thyroid issues, especially those that have ocular complications, and talk about some other causes of proptosis. But when there are 50 diseases to cover, this doesn't all fit into one lecture. So instead, we get an abridged TLDR version. Graves' disease, characterized by hyperthyroidism and proptosis. On to the next. To organize, to learn, and synthesize all of this information on my own was a challenge. But to learn more about how I studied at optometry school, check out this video right here somewhere. Thanks for watching.